There's always another game and another game and another game that you have to perform every time, especially now. Everybody that saw him before COVID and after was like, wow, what happened? I thought the season went really well. I mean, you know, we we came into the season not knowing, you know, what, how how much talent we had or how good we were going to be, and I think we we did really well with the guys we had and and the weird year and all that. So yeah, it was fun. Man, that that team is like the closest team I've ever been a part of. Like we all were best friends. Like we would hang out off the court. You know, every day, at school, out of school, all that. So, I mean, all the guys, I'm going to miss all of them because that was like the, the best team as far as relationships go that I've ever been a part of. Yeah, Ben's obviously like one of my best friends as, as well. And, you know, the other guy in practice that would really push me, like, um, you know, we would really make each other better. And I feel like we bonded on that just making each other better every single day and, and uh, you know, going through all the struggles of the season together and figuring it all out. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna miss him in the gym and just being able to talk to him and, you know, figure out the struggles with him. I think the overall, uh, like, big accomplishment was winning Mission League. That was the first title in 30 years for the school and then making it to Open Division. It was the first time ever in Notre Dame history. So those two things alone were like something that we talked about all year and, and me and Ben have been talking about since my freshman year, you know, doing that. So it was good to, although like we didn't win open, open division, it was good to accomplish those things, um, you know, before they all left, it felt good. such a long season, there's so many ups and downs. I feel like at points I would get too high or too low when I had a great game or a bad game. And there's always another game and another game and another game that you have to perform every time, especially now that I have you know more eyes on me when I play. It's kind of like, um, you know, you gotta, you know, you don't want people to, you know, come to watch you play and be like, oh, he's sorry. So, I mean, just just staying level-headed the whole way through and, and uh, you know, not getting too high or too low. Shay Frazee gave me a call and said he's got a kid training with him who he thinks is like Tyler Hero, but maybe even more athletic. And I was like, huh, that sounds interesting. So we linked up, brought him in for an assessment, and uh, I thought that he had a ton of potential. So he started working with me um, very beginning of COVID, and he wasn't playing basketball. He didn't play high school that season. So he just stayed here, locked in with me basically every day, and just helped him get to the next level. His results have been great. I mean, first, everybody noticed the vertical jump transformation. Everybody that saw him before COVID and after was like, wow, what happened? He just transformed his ability to jump. It transformed his speed, um, put on some strength. He still needs another 10 pounds of muscle for sure before he gets to college. So that's kind of the area that we still need to work on. But, you know, he, physically he transformed. I think he transformed his game as well, especially, you know, working with Shea. I think they did some really good work with him. And overall, I mean, I've, I've watched a couple games this year and he, he looks great. Um, I think sky is the limit for him. So it's, it's great to see somebody's hard work finally paying off. 
And it's not like he's, you know, just now getting good. He's been good. Like he was good as a kid. It's just he's continuing to improve. Whereas a lot of people, they get to a certain level and they just stay there. A lot of people are peaked at age 16 and they just never get better. And so it's cool to see most of the world didn't know Dusty at, you know, sophomore year, freshman, sophomore year. Most people don't know him. Now everybody's starting to know him because he continues to get better. I think he'll make the same leap in his game next year and just keep improving and sky's the limit. His, his workload is super high because of the team they have. They rely on him a lot. Um, I think typically we have guys take like a week off and never fully off, but he'll have to stay active. He could still be in the gym, but we just don't want him playing. But after that week, he's got to get back in here and start rebuilding his, his body because a long basketball season will start to break down your body. And so first we got to build him back up and get his body in a really good place before he gets you know, ramped up into the intense AAU stuff. Because that's the problem for these kids is they got all these minutes on their bodies through high school and then you know, in the AAU it's just as bad and they're going to be traveling all over the nation. So in this period between high school season and when the AAU gets really ramped up, being here, being at the ranch with Uncle Paul in the weight room, that's going to be the key for him, just building back his body. Everybody come back in. Everybody come back in. And you're going to ask Dusty any question you want. Have you played any other sports besides basketball? I've never played any other sports. I've just played basketball my whole life. Yeah. Player of all time. Got to go with Derrick Rose, right? Yeah. Now, Dusty's in high school. Ask Dusty some questions about what you think happens with him when he plays in high school. Yeah. What's your best record of like uh, your seasons in high school? My my best record for like my team. Yeah. Like uh, what? Dusty. Like, how uh, the Warriors got 72 9 what's your best? That's a great question. I think, you know, we went like 32 and like 15, 10. Yeah. But we went like 32 and 10. Yeah, kind of like maybe like 65, uh, 17. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Who's the toughest kid you played so far? Toughest kid I ever played is probably a kid named Jaden Hardy. He's in the G League right now. He's getting drafted this year. Yeah. What's his name? Jaden Hardy. Jayden. Yeah. Or Amari Bailey. What does he play for? He's in the G League right now and he's going to the NBA this year. Yeah. Yeah. NBA? Yeah. What's he doing now? Uh, he doesn't know yet, the draft. Who do you think is the best rookie in NBA right now? The best rookie? That's a great question. Um, I'd say Cade is probably one of the best or Evan Mobley or one of those guys. Yeah. You don't like Evan Mobley? Oh, you don't no, like Cade? I, 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 it's not that I don't like Cade, I just like Kevin Mobley better. Okay. Are you committed to Gonzalo? I am, yeah. Did you get a I, I got a scholarship and I committed to there, yeah. Oh, what about UCLA? Have you got any, uh, so I got, a, I got a scholarship opportunity at UCLA as well. Do you know any famous players from Gonzaga? I'm still trying. I've been watching a lot of the NBA playoffs. I haven't, I haven't had much time to uh, learn about them. Did you see Gonzaga during the season? I, I watched one of their games, uh, because, but I didn't get my. I, like, I watched the first quarter. I didn't get my. Do you know who Chet Holgram is? Really tall guy? Is he like six foot? He's like over seven feet tall. Oh, then I'm talking about somebody else. You guys know Russell Westbrook? Yes. I play for his AAU team. Yeah, so he has a, a team for kids my age, and we all play together. He was best in OKC. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Any more? You good? Sir. Yeah. 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 One of the biggest things for me is being able to inspire kids, especially with this platform I have now. Um, you know, it's like my favorite thing is to see kids um, like that are inspired by me. It's like a super good feeling. Um, and yeah, I just like, you know, I like teaching basketball. I like basketball and I want to, 
you know, share my love for the game with, you know, the younger kids that are coming up and trying to play basketball. He's the most genuine kid you'll ever meet. And I'm not just saying this because I know Dusty for eight years, but he's totally genuine. The saying goes that a person doesn't have a mean bone in their body. He does not have a mean bone in his body. Um, he genuinely cares for people. Um, he came out here today and had a little basketball clinic with 25 little kids ages like seven through 11. And you could just see how much fun he was having. And um, he loves kids. And I do everything I can. I organized this event tonight because I knew that Dusty would like to do this. And he needs to start experiencing um, events like this because he's getting popular. Social media is, has gone crazy. And um, kids in this gym come up to him. They want pictures. And you know, he and Jared, especially Jared, he's, they're known all over. And, uh, and, he's, very, and he's very popular. And uh, whenever he trains, I have young kids come who I train who help him out, they pass him the ball, they rebound for him, they set screens so Ken for him. Croft is kind of like a legendary in the Valley. He's kind of like a well-known shooting coach who's, who's coached or trained a ton of guys, you know, from like Nick Young to all these guys, you know, a couple years back. And he kind of stopped training. And then now um, when I came, I was, uh, I was like, when I first when I first met with Ken, I was probably ten, I'd say, um, and we we met at the Northridge uh, gym to get our first workout in. Um, and yeah, ever since then, he's just been you know perfecting my jump shot, just reps. He's one of the best um, people I'd say in the world at just like teaching people how to shoot the ball, you know, at a high rate. So. I'm super blessed to be able to have someone with that, you know, basketball mind. Um, but yeah, he's been around. He's been my like number one supporter for however many seven years or whatever. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, and that's it. What? And that's it. Everyone else is chilling, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's what I heard. All right, well, so far we have three cards. We have the Rowlet, we have the Cyndaquil, and the Oshawott. Can I get back a little bit? Yeah, you're fine. Tell me where. I'm, I'm and tiny. That's good. we have a nice polka uh, thing. Did so. you see this? This is his plaque, Junior Athlete of the Year from Notre Dame High School. Oh, boy. So you know what we're trying to pull? Charizard. Here he is, right here. We're gonna save that pack for last. How am I gonna open all these packs in the car? What are they? Pokemon cards. Oh, yeah. Pull a Charizard, I'll let you keep it. Really? Yeah. Right. First things first. First things first is get the pack open. Got it. Let's see what we can get. Oh, I'm bending, I'm bending. Right. Jibble. <laughs> Turtwig. Trap niche. Pill pup. Smarmoosh. Starly. <gasps> Bro! 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 What happened? First pack! First pack! Charizard! What? Charizard! What is that? Why is that Charizard? Good? What does that mean? Oh my god! Did you not hear me say, I want to pull a Charizard? I heard you say and what that. what happens if that bro, occurs? Calvin, bro, we've been, every tournament, we've been, every session, we've been opening packs trying to get this card. So what is what do you get with it? I don't know, Calvin, how much is this worth? <laughs> you gotta look it up. You've been in good condition. Bro. Don't mess it up. Holy He's That's like, insane. Bro, Andrew just said if I get a Charizard, I can keep it. <laughs> yeah. 
and you just leave it be. <laughs> just throw those right there. It's still regardless of pull the chocolate bar. No, but I thought it was like the like the hundred thousand dollar one. No, the hundred thousand dollar ones from like the old packs. Uh, the super old packs. Yeah, so we have Kayla Foster from Oak Hill, who's like one of the best players I've played with. You gotta introduce me who these people are. Hey, that's my teammate right here. Yes, sir. Hey, hey y'all see it. Here. Be tough. You see it. CIF Open Division Champs. We got something coming for y'all for sure. And Mercy, who's also, you know, high major, really, really good. So, you know, our talent this year should be, I mean, is going to be probably the most talented backcourt in the West Coast, I'd say, or maybe in the country even. The fir our first time playing together was in, at Fairfax High School in this, like, little tournament against, like, local teams. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I think that first couple games we played really well. And we kind of, you know, sh we, there was, like, some media guys there, and, and we kind of showed everyone that we were like really, really good. and But everyone already knew that, but we kind of just showed them. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun.
Excellent performance. <laughs> okay, should I not say Mrs. Strong? No, no, it's fine. Okay. Anyway. God damn it, Mr. Stromer. You had an excellent performance. Thank you. Tell us your mindset during the game today. Uh, you know, I just wanted to come out and have fun with the new guys. You know, we got a new group of guys, so it was fun to just get out there and run and, and play hard. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was good. Yes, sir. Calvin Mai, man behind the camera. We were just trying to get our chemistry right before, um, you know, Section 7 and this year. Just getting as many reps in together as possible just so we know each other and figure each other out because we've never played together before. So we got to just figure out how to play together. We went, what are we, through 4 and 0 or whatever, 3 and 0. So, I mean, we were expecting to win. Uh, like, a, one of the games was kind of ugly, but, you know, that happens. But, um, no, we looked really good. The first two games, we looked really good. Um, and, yeah, we just got to work on some things. But, yeah, I, I was definitely expecting to win, and that's what we did. Today's a very special day. My mother's birthday. Mom? 25. Girlfriend? Say hi. Brother? I'm, I just, and it's and my birthday. I'm happy you asked. I just turned 13 and a half. Uh, and, it's a and we're having a great time here. My birthday was yesterday. A little less fun, but uh, more cheese. So, we're having a good time. And of course, and of course, Willow, Willow, our little brother, sister. <laughs> she, she just turned twelve. Yeah. She's about to be sixteen. What's that about? Who's this guy? This is young. A random man. Eric Stromer, the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, I'm not sure. You don't know what that is. Don't be careful. You don't know. Oh, sorry. It, uh, it's uh, hi. I'm the, I'm the dad. Uh, any uh, any thoughts about today? Today, today was uh, the the beginning of trying to find chemistry in a team. <laughs> oh, about mom. <laughs> today is my beloved bride's 23rd birthday. This is not a basketball video. Sorry. So I can't, you gotta tell me what kind of video we're doing. She's only just beginning, and thank you for showing this. So what you do is you put your fork right here, and then you put it in the middle like this for more support. Wait, I just poured way too. Uh, and then <laughs> I freeze. You get a nice piece. Happy birthday.
feet. I, uh, Why don't you pass those to others? I don't know what a dirge is. Amy, there's another prison. You don't know what a dirge prison. is? There's no. another prison. Look it up. Happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> Oh my god, I was having a fit about this today. No. And then I found one pair. I know. But guess what? Now you have now two. Now you got both. Where's my white pair? I don't know. How would I know where your shoes are? Happy birthday. birthday. Okay, I can Okay. Okay. Thank you. Did you so wear those? I think so. Or white is better. Oh. Uh, yeah. How do you do <laughs> Mom, I got this from from Ralph's for you. <laughs> Thank you. Happy yeah, birthday. No, why did you do that? Happy birthday. Oh, 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 I didn't tell them. I swear. You're not doing that. Shut up. Oh. The bells. The bells. Watch this. Wait. It's a Christmas song. What is the blue? The blue is the best one. No, they're these. That was me. I just left it there. What is that? Gold hoop earrings? What? Wow, that's something I would pick up by myself. Maybe she helped a little. He asked. I didn't know. You like them? Yeah. I just want the green. Maybe no, give the chocolate one to Calvin. That one was really good. You want the chocolate? Just oh, split, it. split it out. Mom, I wrote that card too with Willow. No, he didn't. I was in part of it. He was guys. there too. And we all contributed equally. So. You're welcome. Mom, you're welcome. From you, didn't do any, you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. Skylar wrote it too. Wait, I didn't eat. <laughs> Mom, that's oh. going on YouTube. Swipe up and like more. <laughs> swipe up for more Dusty. Blonde boy, no. Blonde girl. Blonde boy, one is, boy one is mom crying. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you know what people call me? I'm a white girl wonder. Mm. And you know what people call me? Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. God, I couldn't even get to the end because my tear, it got too blurry. It was like, oh my you didn't even read the end? Yeah, I did. I had to stop because I couldn't see. My dad's main love of his life besides his family was basketball. He was an attorney, but he was also, I grew up in Indiana, he was also one of the architects of the American Basketball Association in the late 60s. And one of the uh, owners, the original owners of the Indiana Pacers. So my childhood was this beautifully surreal, wonderful uh, time of watching my dad pursue this dream that was to create an alternative league to the NBA that was uh, more playground style, the dunking, the three-pointers, um, giving opportunity to players who weren't uh, being noticed, who were inter a lot of inner city kids who di didn't, weren't on a fancy fast track. Um, and so this was his love. And, and so when Dusty randomly chose it, he was only six, it wasn't from anything my dad said or did. My dad was in Indianapolis and was no longer, had nothing to do with basketball. It was like they were spirit animals. And it was from that point on, um, this beautiful connection of, because their temperaments are so similar, of the joy of basketball and sort of the the spiritual element to basketball and how it is how it represents life and how it you know it's just a deep part of your soul and they just had this connection 
when Dusty started getting offers, we had these, you know, going on these visits and we don't really know what you to expect or what it is. And UCLA was um, one of the first visits and we walked into Pauley Pavilion and he was ahead of me and Eric was ahead of me and Mick Cronin was ahead of me. So I was by myself and I could feel it was really, I could feel the presence of my dad and I got very um, emotional and sorry and I and Dusty turned around in that moment and he said and he said to me do you feel that and I was like what are you talking about he said do you do you feel that do you feel him and so I can't explain it but it was um, it was that it's that kind of depth of connection that I would say is inexplainable um, and John Wooden and that you know it is from Indiana it's that's that world that's the that is that's the love that is inexplainable but I feel is a part of our family story do you want one? Yes, sure. which one do you want? Uh, what do you want to have a well, the oh, good, oh. Wow, they still there's no more chocolate. That's the eight two chocolate. Yeah, what do you want? Scarlett's eating the second one. Vanilla. Wait, Wait, no, we have we have chocolate with vanilla. Oh no, no, don't we don't. Maybe yeah, we, we do. We have chocolate with vanilla. Or coconut. Wait, did you did you Get actually write this? That's yeah. unbelievable. Can I read? Can I read? That's a beautiful poem. Oh, yeah. Can I say one thing? Is no, part, no, they can read it. What? No, but no, about the dust in the particles. Oh, yeah, well, that's from when you were little. You yeah. said that. Yeah. When she was really, really little, she said to me that God is in the dust and the light, and so you have to know that when you're. That's a cinema girl, right? Me and my mom are, I'd say, really, really close. You know, she helps me through everything, like outside of sports and outside of all that. And she helps me with all that, like mental stuff. And honestly, like she has made so many sacrifices for me as a basketball player, like. She works her butt off, number one, to provide for this family. Like she's, I don't know how she does it, but she works her butt off every single day. Like that's where, I, I think that's where I get my work ethic is from her because I really haven't seen a lot of people work as hard as she does and, and, and love what they do also. So that's really inspiring for me, I think she, has shown me that like hard work really does pay off. And yeah, like I, I don't know how I could ever repay her for that, but <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she's she's something else. She really is. I mean, <laughs> it's so you know. It's the great, you know, it's so sweet. I didn't, I didn't know you'd have, it's, he's such a good kid and he's such a humble kid. And um, I would do anything, you know, for all three of them, hard work is just a part of it. And I'm so glad that he talks about it that way because I've missed, a, I've had to miss a bunch of games. Um, I had to miss, Peach Jam, although I was watching it in my little computer while I was making the show I was making the whole time. So, that's so sweet. I hope I can have, I hope, I hope you'll let me have this. He's so, this is, this is him, this is who he is. He's just a really beautifully hardworking, kind person. So, I'm glad that he sees my hard work as more than just stress and exhaustion. <laughs> that, that it actually means something to him. I would just want to tell him that I'm just um, so proud because it is a hard thing he's doing. And, you know, he has to fight really hard all the time. He's been an underdog a thousand times. And I'm so proud of that courage. I'm actually more proud sometimes of how he handles the loss. And that's what I would say is that is defines who he is, is how he's managing the
the really, really hard stuff. I'm so proud of that. And that will be whatever road he's on, that will define who he is as a human being. Because there's a lot of hard stuff. So that's what I would say to him. So proud. Benz and L. Here we go. Hey, Wyatt, let me see this. Let me see the sock. Let me see the sock. Oh, come on. What are you talking about? Oh, look at the dusty sock. Hold on, hold on. Get your merch. I want a pair of those. Get your merch. You gotta get your merch up. Get open. That's what I was saying. I couldn't open it. Oh, that's what I was saying. You open it for me. No, I'm okay. Actually. Hey guys, thanks for watching Blonde Boy Wonder Part 3. Make sure you just pull out your butt and take a big poo on that like button. <laughs>